How many weather forecasts will you hear today? A dozen? More? Today, you are almost guaranteed to hear a weather forecast, whether or not you want it. All major countries run their own government-supported weather services. Here in Canada, we have the Meteorological Service of Canada, which is a branch of Environment Canada. In the United States, it is the National Weather Service, a part of the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, which in turn is a branch of the U.S. Department of Commerce. These agencies have the primary responsibility of generating the basic forecast for their country and for issuing weather warnings. Canada is a land of weather extremes. In many ways, breaking weather records is normal. Why? One problem is a lack of long-running weather observations from any given location. Those observations allow statistics to be generated. When you hear the radio announcers say that the average high temperature for your location for this date is 20 degrees Celsius, what does that really mean? Many times, there may be only 50 or 100 years of data. That is only 50 or 100 examples of a high or low temperature for that location for that date. But the Earth is ancient, and we are missing the vast majority of weather records. The average high temperature is generated from limited examples. And the stats for that individual day or any given individual day may vary wildly from the calculated average. For example, if we average two numbers, let's say zero and 1,000, we're going to get zero plus 1,000 divided by two equals 500. But does 500 really represent either number well? What about 500 and 500? Well, the average is the same. They add to 1,000, divide by two, you have 500. Now, that average exactly represents the individual numbers. Averages may represent the data well or poorly. Day-to-day -day weather can normally range far from the average. In fact, a parameter like temperature can sometimes exceed the highest or lowest number that generated the original average. The lower the number of past observations available, the easier it is to break a record. Weather is highly variable over short and long periods of time and over short and long distances. A sunny, warm day can become cold and damp a few kilometers down the road when you run into a coastal fog bank. Heavy snow flurries generated by cold air moving over the Great Lakes can give zero visibility, but 10 kilometers down the road, the sun may be shining. The Atlantic coast of Canada can see heavy rain and plus 10 degrees Celsius one January day and minus 10 degrees and snow flurries the next. It's the nature of weather, Canadians often say. If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. We're not unique in this regard. Weather affects every area of our world. Conditions vary across the globe, but weather never goes away. Weather forecasting skill has steadily developed over the years. The better forecasts are largely driven by the vast amount of initial weather data that can now be used and highly sophisticated computerized weather prediction models. This area of weather forecasting is referred to as numerical weather prediction. Not many decades back, input to these models was largely confined the land-based weather observing stations taking hourly observations and transmitting them around the world. There were far fewer upper air stations that sent up balloons to record temperature, pressure, winds, and other factors at altitude and then only twice per day. Again, that information was transmitted internationally. There were ship reports, boy reports, pilot reports, and a few other sources of information. Today, there are vastly more frequent and varied data sources. For example, we have satellites that can process immeasurable amounts of remotely sensed atmospheric data, which can then 
be ingested into weather models. Those weather models require the biggest and most sophisticated supercomputers. These machines are getting bigger and faster and can churn through the billions of calculations required to generate forecasts in real time. Computerized communication systems gather the information and feed it to a central site. The data are processed to initialize a computer model and the model is run and the output is sent to forecasts offices all over the world in three to five hours. As discussed, breaking weather averages is somewhat normal, but are the extreme weather events that we see currently normal? In recent years, there have been ongoing news stories of exceptional droughts, epic rainfalls, record-breaking hurricanes, extreme heat waves, or historical cold weather. Many scientists claim that this is associated with human-induced or anthropogenic climate change. A small group of scientists hardly disagree. Climatologists know the Earth has gone through several natural warming and cooling cycles. Are we now in a normally warmer phase or are the climate change advocates right? Weather is complex beyond imagination. It involves the movement of every molecule of air in the world. The weather features that God put in place keep the Earth's temperature stabilized and bring us rain for our gardens and a nice fresh breeze on a hot summer day. Our national weather services provide valuable services to our people. Nobody would want to go back to the days of no weather forecasts. We don't want a hurricane descending upon an exposed coastline unexpectedly. Western countries are greatly blessed in this area. We generally know what's coming. We will have weather, whether we want it or not. It will be good or bad according to the rules of physics, but also as God determines. You may like the booklet written by Mr. Gerald Weston, Acts of God, Why Natural Disasters. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And for more content like this, please visit our website at tomorrowsworldviewpoint.org.